If you are not supporting the testing, you not only put yourself at risk, you put your whole family in a higher risk. Yes. If the fourth wave of the epidemic cannot be controlled, is it necessary to conduct another universal testing or would mandatory testing of specific groups be more effective? I'm biased because I'm chairman of okay. SDC, who is the mm -hmm. biggest testing center <laughs> in Hong Kong. The problem is, if you look at the closure of Yomati, when we found 13 out of a few thousand, and yet we were still having confirmed cases in the 60s or 70s, that means there are still a lot out in the community. The first objective now is how do we find out right. all this, what we call the virtual carriers, yeah, yeah. and then and, and quarantine them. If the government chooses to do the high-risk group, the targeted group, I think you should do it faster and cover bigger areas. Mm. But maybe universal testing is also mm. uh, an alternative because we now do have the capacity to do it. Like uh, SDC, we can do uh, 140,000 single tube a day. Together with other labs, we can do over a million a day. So assuming if you want to do 5 million people, it could be done within a week. Also, Hong Kong was yeah. uh, implementing some regional lockdowns, for example, just recently. The Yamate. Yeah. yeah. And as the government quite rightly admitted that, you know, maybe there were some logistic problems because mm -hmm. a lot of people actually left already. If you look at the mainland, they did it in a very efficient way. In Hebei, Sijia mm. uh, okay, lockdown, okay, done. In that way, they have been able to find out, oh, within this area, who are the carriers and quarantine you. Because the speed is very important, yeah. you need to be as fast as you can. As uh, any infectious disease, right, control the source of the virus is the it's fundamentally essential, yeah. essential. First of all, make everything transparent, and uh, then we educate the population why the testing is so important. A lot of people, they do not know the difference between the COVID-19 and the SARS. For SARS infected individuals usually develop high fever. Then, if you have high fever, we isolate. Yeah. We can quickly, basically isolate the source, yeah. so that we can control the further spread. But for COVID-19, this virus, there are still asymptomatic carriers. And it's very they they didn't show any symptom, right? So that's why. We cannot, using simple temperature monitor, can identify all the infected individuals easily. So that's the reason why we need to do the test. And for me, the first time only so only 1.8 oh, million yeah, show yeah. up. I feel it's kind of disappointing yes. too. You know why? At that time, I strongly support, I ask all my people <laughs> working, yeah, we yeah. should all go for yeah. tests. Yeah. The reason for that is like a fire drill. We need a capacity building in Hong yeah. Kong. Who knows one day this may hit a much bigger population and yeah. a totally like a wildfire out of yeah. control. We set up the 16 air labs at the Zhongshan mm -hmm. uh, um, sports ground. We set it up like within days. Uh, this is the same air labs that are used in Wuhan or Beijing. We develop a beautiful system, mm -hmm. except that we don't have enough people. Right. Another issue about the education is important. You know, we have to understand the victim of the viral transmission is primarily your family relatives. That's right. right. If closest, you are not supporting the testing, you not only put yourself at risk, you also put your, your whole family, family yeah. in a higher risk yes. compared with the other community members, yeah. right? So you have to think in that way, then you will appreciate the government's call for the universal testing. Right? Yeah. And as the world is hit hard by the epidemic, public and medical resources have been mostly allocated to fight the COVID-19. But how about patients with cancer, AIDS, or other underlying diseases? This is the problem that every country mm -hmm. is trying to fight, to what we call the flattened curve. Mm -hmm. Because you, you still want your public health system, hospital right. system, to work. To work properly, Because yes. can you imagine, if all of a sudden, now Hong Kong, Hong mm -hmm. Kong, we have close to 30,000 hospital beds, mm -hmm. uh, and it's pretty full. Mm -hmm. Assuming if you have 6,000 people mm -hmm. that need to be admitted tomorrow, you're dead. Mm -hmm. 
Right. And that's why the hospital authority, they have plan A, plan B, plan C. Yes. And I have a, a real example. It's one of my friend's mother uh, had cancer and needed to go to do a chemo mm. in a hospital, but was asked to delay it mm -hmm. because we don't have capacity to do it. We're lucky that we have the support of the country and mm -hmm. we have new hospitals and we do have enough sort of resources to deal mm -hmm. with the situation. So far, the, the headache issue is really the, like uh, HIV, AIDS, and uh, COVID-19, two major pandemic now at the same period of time. Yeah. So then how can they get the proper uh, drugs on time? Yeah and also how to receive the testing on time. Indeed, uh, COVID-19 already generated uh, oh, many yeah. difficult issues. Yes. Uh, but same thing also applies for cancer patients and others. We have a lot of uh, symposium meeting discussing how yeah. to deal with this kind of issue, not only at the regional level, also at the international level. Yeah. Yeah. The same with the vaccines. It seems like every country is running for their own, so also I don't yeah. understand why there is no a world cooperation on this. Uh, actually, it's a very there, are, there are there actually is. international organizations. Yeah. They have been coordinating by working with WHO yeah. and uh, Gates Foundation, yeah. and a lot of, you know, they are working actually together. Uh, for example, making the vaccine available for developing countries yes. and uh, for places they have limited resources. Mm -hmm. But the problem yeah. is, going back to what you said, Stephen, earlier on, is the production capacity. Also, yes. Like, if you look at Pfizer and BioNTech, how many can they um, produce? Right. Joe Biden just said, now oh, I'm going to make sure that I have now 300 million mm. doses. So Pfizer is not allowed to export the European community is also saying that, oh, mm -hmm. we want vac vaccine mm -hmm. for Europe. Mm -hmm. If they do that, then where are we going to get a vaccine from? Mm -hmm. Right. So maybe our only uh, saving grace is from the mainland. Yeah. Recently, people also talking about uh, uh, whether there's another deadly virus mm -hmm. after COVID-19. We never expected COVID-19 to happen like at this scale. Oh, that's right. In order to in response to this emerging infection, just in recent, like 20 years also, right? Talking about the SARS, MERS, Ebola, Zika. Yeah. There are actually so many different type of emerging infection leading to major outbreaks and uh, affecting the human population. So we better be prepared for this. And I want to ask Dr. Chen about this because I heard a lot of this um, sort of research institute or, 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 or critics. Let's say in the last 20, 30 years, the medical community have spent a lot of money in researches on cancer, but haven't spent enough money or resources in researches on viruses. As a researcher working at the University of Hong Kong, I do see the situation Improving. Good. <laughs> uh, first of all, in, in the size of the funding support, now we have like a same based research, yeah. TRS, yeah. Uh, area of excellence, yeah. and also CRF, collaborative research funding yeah. mechanism. Uh, but uh, at the same time, we actually generated a lot of patent, okay, the innovative technology. But many of those uh, uh, inventions are sitting there. There's uh, no Not clear path for development. So I give you one example using this opportunity. We do have uh, one particular scheme by ITC, right? Yes. The funding agency for the innovation, innovation technology. Yeah. And uh, they actually said you can actually develop your product. But in order for you to qualify to apply for this funding, you need to have a local industry matching fund to go with it. For me, working on HIV AIDS, right? There's no company in Hong Kong working on <laughs> HIV AIDS, right? So there's a policy, there's money, but I cannot really well, benefit from such kind of a policy yeah. and uh, restricting our scientific development. Yeah. When will the life in Hong Kong be normalized? I hope yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> we want to be normal as quickly as, as possible. Soon, yeah. As soon as possible. This is everybody's wish. Yeah. Uh, at the same time, we cannot be too relaxed at this moment. That's right. Right? In the mainland, you cannot believe it. Let's say in February of last, March last year, mainland was closed everywhere. Yes. You go to mainland now, 
life is back to normal. Business is booming, and mainland is probably the only country in the world that has a positive GDP growth. Yeah, and we are sitting right next to it. Right. And if we do not jump onto this Oriental Express, we are going to, we are going to get nowhere. I think one issue is the how effective the current measures, right, in terms of control of the virus identification and the control yeah. of the spreading, right? Talking about this topic, I think it's very important. Hong Kong uh, adapt some of the technology uh, which already been demonstrated in somewhere else, right? Effective. For example, one of the, uh, the issue is uh, how to do contact trace, right? Yes. So how are you going to do this actively instead of in a passive mode? It's very, very important. My friend from Beijing was telling me he was driving through a particular area and then got a message in his cell phone say, hey, you've been to this place, you need to be tested. So that's how you can do it actively based on the real technology, cell phone and the yeah. big data, help you to do something wisely. Otherwise, uh, currently the technique we are using, you go somewhere, you have to scan. Yeah. But uh, you I, I, I wonder, so <laughs> where is the thing I can scan? Yeah, I cannot yeah, yeah. find it. The Hong Kong government is, is trying to reconcile between this efficiency and privacy. Mm -hmm. But to me, privacy is important. But you are not going to do privacy at the expense mm -hmm. of the whole city mm -hmm. getting virus. We all respect privacy, human rights and everything, mm -hmm. but fighting the virus more is the number one priority. Yeah. So what advice do you have for the Hong Kong government? I think we have to have a very s clear roadmap, timetable, and mobilize the 7 million people because I think everyone is tired mm. of the current situation. We all want to get out of it mm -hmm. and mobilize everyone to support the government and to do whatever is the fastest way mm -hmm. for us to get back to the normal life. And uh, basically we have to take uh, all the successful measures which already been demonstrated, especially in mainland, yeah. right, in a way to control or even eliminate the, yeah. the source of the infection. And how yeah. about any advice for the general public? Your health is your own responsibility. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And your family's health is also your responsibility. Mm -hmm. So wear masks, wash your hands, mm -hmm. do testing. This is the end of our show. I want to remind to anybody who does not agree with today's opinion or with our previous opinion to challenge us and take part of our show. Thank you, our guests, Thank you. Thank Dr. You. Wu and Dr. Chen. Thank you. We have a slogan. We say, through dots, we connect. Can you say for us? Through, through dots, dots, we, dots we, connect. we connect. We connect. Perfect.